Let's talk about a nutrition principle called energy density. This impacts your appetite and can encourage you to gain or lose weight, whether you're aware of it or not. In simple terms, energy density is the calorie value per weight of food, i.e. calories per gram, and is commonly discussed with the term food volume. This is approximately 100 calories of watermelon. This is approximately 100 calories of olive oil. I don't need to put these on the scale for you to already know that this weighs significantly more than this, despite the fact they have the same number of calories. Energy density of food is primarily governed by two factors, the water content of food and the fat content of food. But rather than using two completely different foods, why don't we pick something from the same family? This is 100 calories worth of pineapple. This is also 100 calories worth of pineapple, dehydrated. This one weighs over six times more than this one. This is approximately 50 calories worth of fruit juice. Now if we add water to that, this is still 50 calories, even though the volume of liquid is higher. So why is this important? Generally speaking, the lower the energy density of a food, the more satiating it is. That just means it's gonna fill your little tummy up and help you feel more full. Although foods with a high water content, like watermelon and cucumber, aren't commonly considered to be very filling, you have to keep in mind that even a 500 calorie portion of these would be a metric fuckload of food. Whereas foods with a very high energy density, like peanut butter, are the type of things that you could accidentally smear an extra 500 calories worth on your toast without even really realising it. In one early study, foods were provided to supply three different menus where the foods looked and tasted similar, but the energy density was manipulated by using different levels of dietary fat. No quantities were provided, subjects were allowed to consume as much as they wanted, and on the higher energy density diet, subjects gained weight, and on the lower energy density diet, subjects lost weight. And a longer follow-up study came to similar conclusions. Subjects could pick from a fixed menu of food and everything was available either as a higher energy density, higher fat item or a lower energy density, lower fat item, depending on which diet the subject was following. Once again, when subjects were on the lower energy density diet, they lost weight. And this helped cement the idea that you could lose weight without altering portion sizes. Rather than reducing the size of the plateful you're eating, you can keep the plateful the same, but reduce the energy density of that plateful. Although these studies manipulated dietary fat, there are other vehicles that can achieve the same result. Some studies have manipulated the energy density of meals simply by adding more vegetables. If your existing plateful is split equally between meat and grains, and you reduce both of those and substitute them with some lower calorie vegetables, you will probably reduce your energy intake. Now, some of you might be thinking, ah, oh, but vegetables taste like sadness and despair, which is totally fair. Whenever it's a child's birthday, they get excited for cake. They never ask for a birthday broccoli. Now, to overcome this obstacle, one study implemented covert vegetable consumption. In the food science equivalent of an undercover mission, they sneaked those boring little buggers into foods in puree form. And once again, as vegetable consumption went up, calorie consumption went down. And even though they ate fewer calories, appetite levels were similar. They did not feel hungrier. And pro tip for parents of fussy eaters, Turns out children eat more vegetables when you hide them in their food as well. There are quite a lot of research studies that use different vehicles to arrive at the same destination. Rather than increasing the vegetable content or reducing the fat content of the meal that you're eating, some research papers have looked at giving people low energy density foods as a starter. Consuming a low energy density salad first reduced calorie intake of the main course and calorie intake of the meal overall. If salads don't tickle your testicles, other foods have also been tested, like this study that used soup as a starter, and once again, total calorie intake was reduced. Or this one, which tested apple slices, once again, reducing total calorie intake. In short, we have lots of research showing us the mechanism that reducing energy density can reduce calorie intake of that meal. But without long-term studies that actually measure body composition, that's the bit that people actually care about. This is all speculation, but thankfully we do have a few of those. For example, this study counseled subjects to reduce their energy density. Group one, reduce their dietary fat intake. Group two, reduce their dietary fat intake and ate more fruits and vegetables. Importantly, no calorie recommendations were used. They could eat as much food as they wanted. But even within those constraints, reducing energy density resulted in weight loss in both groups. And you know what's cool about this? A lot of weight loss advice is super fucking restrictive. Like. Here is a list of all the foods I need to avoid. So it's kind of refreshing that the 
health-promoting recommendation of eating more fruits and vegetables could have a body weight regulation effect as well. So Cliff notes, energy density is an underlying principle and it impacts your appetite and how much food you eat, whether you realize it or not. Does this mean that if you want to lose weight, you should manipulate every single food that you eat to reduce its calorie content? Absolutely fucking not. Some people might benefit from very simple recommendations like choosing leaner cuts of red meat, reducing the amount of added oils that they cook with, increasing their fruit and vegetable content, etc. But you don't have to go full fucking sadness mode by only eating cauliflower rice and courgette spaghetti. Unless you want to, of course. I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do. The point is, now you know this stuff, you can use this to your advantage or not. However, suits your personal preferences.